okay on to the next one it's parentity training pipelines in apache beam by jasper van den bosch all right uh welcome everyone to this talk on per entity training pipelines uh, we already got a couple of questions about training pipelines so here we go um who am i well i'm a software engineer at demo six which is a company all the way in belgium what we do is we make uh, custom ml applications for a wide variety of industries uh, we do computer vision in manufacturing for quality control to semantic search, all those really cool ML things. And to build these uh, ML applications, we often use uh, Apache Beam for our data processing and so on. And we actually have a couple of contributors to uh, the Apache Beam repo. But enough about me. Um, let's take a look at what we are going to see in this talk. Um, so I'm first going to go lightly over um, the development of ML applications, what training is, and a little bit of what MLOps means. Then we're going to take a look at the per entity training and what it actually means and why you would use it. And then we're going to dive into an example pipeline, check how that would look in code. And then as a little bonus, I'll tell you how to actually use your models uh, that you just trained using the run inference uh, transform. So uh, the very basics, uh, a machine learning model, training it, what does that mean? So imagine if I give you the assignment, the task to write a program that recognizes the beam mascots in photos using classical logic only. That's virtually impossible. Uh, because the Firefly can be upside down, it can be tilted a little bit, it can be partly on the photo, it can be a little bit blurry, and so on and so forth. So, over the last couple of years, um, thanks to the widely progress in um, computational power, uh, we actually have gotten techniques called machine learning, uh, where we are going to train a model by showcasing it a lot and lots of examples of photos containing the firefly and photos not containing the firefly. And what's going to happen is this model is going to tweak parameters uh, using some statistical models and fancy math, which we're not going to go in deeper right now. And then eventually it will learn what the firefly looks like. And what we've done uh, after training half is a model that you can give an input uh, being a photo uh, and it will return uh, whether that photo contains uh, the Firefly. Of course, machine learning has a lot of applications. Uh, I think it's widely popular and everybody has seen like cool things being done with it. So um, machine learning applications and developing them is actually quite a big difference from just training a model. Training a model is just this very small step in the whole development cycle, uh, something that's often forgotten by people who have never really developed one. And um, this whole thing of building an application and managing and automating that stuff is called MLOps. It stands for Machine Learning Operations, and it's similar to Developer Operations, where we are trying to automate flows like uh, the training flow and the, the development of the application, uh, the deployment of the uh, machine learning model to an endpoint that serves um, the, app, the model. Um, and so if you're at the very start of your machine learning journey, what you might end up is you're a data scientist, you have your data, you develop your model, you are happy with it, uh, you put it on a server, and it can serve you some predictions. But then some new data is coming in, and you develop a new model, and then you have to build a new model, you have to put it up again to the server. What you basically want to do is you want to automate this flow, just like in a CI CD pipeline. Um, some that's more like this where you are going to automatically trigger a pipeline that trains your models using the newest data, stores the model in an artifact registry where you can simply have different versions of your trained models and so on and so forth. And this can 
go really far up to fully fledged uh, CI/CD pipelines running around. But the most important thing is you definitely want to look into automating this stuff like training, like storing your models, like collecting your data and so on and so forth. There's no way that somebody in a developer operations would say like, we're going to deploy our application without any CI CD. It's kind of the same with machine learning applications. And what we want to do is we want to have the training pipeline over here be written in Apache Beam. So then there's another question we need to answer, and that is, what does the per entity training actually mean, right? So I'm going to do this to explain this by an example. So imagine you're working for a big company that has a web shop that sells goods to people all over the world. And you're given the task to build a chatbot that is able to support people all over the world in their own native language. Like the first thing you could do is uh, LLMs are really cool. Uh, everybody has heard about like ChatGPT and all the things and those models can be used in basically all languages. So you could just slap on a really big model that serves uh, all languages and call it a day. Or you could go for a per entity training approach where you're going to train a model for Dutch, for Spanish, for Italian. And what you will be able to do is you'll be able to use like a smaller, simpler model because you don't have to uh, train it using the data of all languages you want to support. Another example uh, would be uh, to, defect, to detect uh, defects in a manufacturing plant. So where you have like uh, lots of sensors, cameras, and so on and so forth, you could train a single really big model that is able to detect all kinds of defects, uh, problems with your product using all the sensor data. Or you could go for a per entity approach where you take a couple of sensors that detect specific problems and you can then go for a much simpler model. So you're probably wondering like why, why would I use a per entity training approach? Because you know, I now have to manage a whole bunch of models. That sounds like a lot more complicated than managing this one big model, right? Well, the very first argument is uh, hardware is very expensive. And in order to run those really big models, you need really, really powerful hardware. For those LLMs, you often need like clusters of the most expensive GPUs. And if you're serving a lot of traffic, that's going to be a really, really pricey bill. Well, on the other hand, like the simpler models might be able to run on CPUs or more lightweight GPUs to be able to save a lot of costs. On the other hand, training a really big model is also taking a lot more time than training a simple model. So you need to train, for instance, a multilingual model using the data of all the languages that you want to support. But on the other hand, if you have a model that's specifically for English data uh, or English customers, you only need to train it on English data, which means you will be able to train a lot faster and you'll be able to retrain your model a lot faster if you have new data coming in. Plus, you can also train multiple models in parallel, which also will increase the speed. Uh, and also for inference, so once you actually have your trained model and you're predicting things with it, it will take a lot less time because the models are so much simpler. And then another one that's maybe not super obvious, but it's actually uh, much easier to address uh, fairness and bias. So what do we mean? Uh, you have trained this really big model using a lot of data uh, with like Korean, with Swedish, with German, and then you put it in production and you find out like your Korean customers are like, yeah, the quality is not up there. We're not completely happy. Uh, while the Swedish customers, for instance, are very happy because uh, the quality is very good and it sounds very human-like. And that could be because there are imbalances in the datasets 
or something wrong with your data, um, collection, stuff like that. Um, and that's really difficult if you have like data sets of, that are terabytes and terabytes big to fine tune and find that balance between the languages. And then another one is uh, actually debugging problems. Like sometimes when you're training a model, stuff is going wrong, just like you're writing any other program. You did something wrong and you're trying to figure out what's going on. When you're training like this really big model on these clusters and, and stuff, it can get quite tricky to actually find the root cause of the problem you're facing. While on the other hand, a simpler model, you might be able to debug it locally. You might be able to try out different things much quicker than on this big model. So just to conclude, uh, the advantage of parentheses training. So we have less powerful hardware requirements. We can address the bias and unfairness a little bit easier. Uh, we can train models a lot faster and we can serve them a lot faster and we have easier debugging. So there's this one big problem we're still facing and it is how do I manage the training of all these models, right? Like it's all fun and giggles like, yeah, we have like this simple model, but now I have 20 models to train and 20 models to process data for coming from all kinds of different sources in all kinds of different formats. So for instance, you have uh, data coming from different sensors. You have static data coming in with schemas, with uh, schedules, whatever. Um, how do I route the correct data to the correct model? And that is actually exactly where we are going to use Apache Beam for. So Apache Beam can handle streaming data and batch data. So this means we can use the streaming data to collect live data from wherever we are collecting live data or we can use batch data to process our uh, static data sets that we have found on the internet that we have collected in previous rounds. Um, and then Apache Beam is obviously also really good at preparing, transforming, pre-processing data to put the data in the right format, right? Uh, and Apache Beam is also like capable of running on different runners. So you might be able to run uh, your training pipeline on a GPU if you are required to have a GPU because your model is slightly more complicated or you want to have them on a high memory model uh, means, uh, because yeah, you need some other requirements. And then the final step is um, abstraction in ML libraries actually allows us to write a model or implement a model really, really easily. Like, Training a model uh, does not require a lot of code. So it's actually fairly easy to put that code inside a custom do fun or whatever, uh, mapping uh, transform. All right. So let's now look at an example pipeline of how this is uh, implemented in uh, Apache Beam. So we're going to be uh, looking at a pretty much toy data set where we are going to uh, predict the incomes of people uh, based on their education level. So we're going to train a model for uh, each of the education levels. So we're going to train a model for people with a bachelor's degree, people with a master's degree, people with a PhD, and so on and so forth. So on a high level, this pipeline will look as follows. We will first load our data, just like any start of uh, a pipeline, I guess. Uh, then we will do a little bit of data cleaning. So uh, a data set typically has some missing values here and there. We want to get rid of those. Uh, and then we're basically going to group uh, the data set uh, per uh, entity or per education level then we are basically going to feed all of that data into the models, train the models, and then we're going to save the models to a persistent storage. So splitting data per 
level or per education level is actually fairly easy. It's just a group by key. Um, and then you will end up with several collections. And then we're just going to feed those into the models, let the models train, and then finally we're going, going to save them. So in code, this looks like this. This is a, a very easy pipeline, I would say. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the data from text. Uh, we're working with tabular data, so it's just a CSV file. We're then going to basically convert this into lists um, just for some easy processing. Then we're going to filter out the values we don't want or the, the values that should have been filtered out because they are, have missing values, they have malformed data, and so on and so forth. Um, then we're basically going to group uh, per key. So we're going to group um, all the training data per education level. And then we're basically going to prepare the data, which is just putting in the right format for the model. Uh, then after that, we're going to actually train the model, uh, which is also just in a simple do form. And then once that has finished, we just write our models to a persistent storage. So uh, the filtering is a really easy function. Uh, we're basically going to look for the people with a bachelor's degree, with a master's degree, with a PhD. Uh, we're going to check if the uh, or the data instance actually contain enough or contain the data. Um, that's not that complicated. Then what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the data for training. So we're going to put it in the right format. So we're going to put it in a pandas data frame uh, as that is something uh, an ASCULAR model is actually able to take in as an input for training. Then we're going to uh, basically convert all categorical features uh, into numerical features because that's also a requirement for our sklearn model and then we're going to basically encode and then fit our model so basically call the training function um, then training do a fun um, basically not a lot here we're just uh, 100 encoding and then we're going to uh, fit the model, which is just basically calling the training code. Um, once the training is done, we're going to uh, write the model to a persistent storage. Um, the reason we do that is because you basically want to keep track of your models you have trained. You want to compare different versions. You want to um, maybe revert back to an old version if you have trained a new model that is for some reason performing worse. Um, it's always good to, to use uh, to, to save models to a persistent storage. Also, it can save you like a lot of computation time because training models might actually take some time uh, if something were to were to go wrong at some point. So that was actually a very basic per entity training pipeline. Uh, so it allows you to train a whole bunch of models really quickly, really easily. Um, let's extend this pipeline just a little bit with like a neat feature, right? Uh, at the end of the models we have trained, we're actually going to calculate some metrics. Uh, metrics like accuracy or an F1 score that actually allow us to evaluate our model, see if the model is actually performing well. So that actually is also like just a simple doofin we can just append to uh, the pipeline where we're just going to basically uh, get ourselves a test set. So uh, that is data that is not being used to train the model. So new data that the model hasn't seen. Uh, we're going to take our model uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate or do the predictions with the model. Uh, we're going to load a bunch of labels. So what that means is we're going to have the expected outputs for all instances in the data set. And then we're just going to calculate metrics. We're basically going to check how many of the predictions were correct, how many of the predictions were wrong. Uh, and then you can basically use all metrics you want that are relevant for your model uh, and that are relevant for the evaluation of your model. 
So we now have this uh, pipeline, uh, which is really cool. We can automatically trigger it quite easily. We can then plug that into our MLOps architecture. You can just basically have it over there. Uh, what we can then do is we can have, for instance, our CSD just start a data flow job that starts training the models uh, once we have a new set of data coming in, or maybe we can start running the training data, the training pipeline every day if you're collecting data on a daily basis, uh, basically retraining your model on newest on your data every day or every n days or whatever uh, time you want, want to do this. So um, these models are now trained, but can we actually use them? Uh, actually, you can also use them in uh, Apache Beam uh, quite easily. Uh, you can do this uh, basically with the run inferences. There are, have been a, a couple of talks uh, about the run inference, so I'm not going to dive too deep into it. But basically, if you were want to uh, use your per entity training models in a run inference uh, setup, what you basically have to do is you basically have to load all your models. You basically have to load your data. You have to split your data uh, per entity. So for instance, the language data, you uh, split it per uh, language. And then you're basically going to feed the correct data to the correct model, basically run run inference on all the models using their correct input data. And then if you want, you can do some post-processing on the output predictions. And that is basically it. Um, so today we've talked about per entity training pipelines, and I hope you're now convinced that uh, you need some sort of MLOps, that you need this sort of automation if you want to develop robust uh, ML applications, and that Apache Beam can actually be part of such an MLOps uh, setup. Um, we have talked about the per entity training uh, and the advantages, meaning that we need less powerful hardware, we have easier to adjust bias, we have a cheaper deployment, and so on and so forth. And then we have um, Apache Beam being a really good candidate for these per entity training pipelines, simply because it's really capable of processing data coming from various sources, transforming it into the right format for each model, and then basically running this lightweight training for these more lightweight models um, is also not that big of a problem, thanks to beautiful abstraction in uh, ML libraries. So. Thank you for coming to the Stalcomper Entity Training Pipelines and I'll happily answer your questions.